Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA a certification training course on BIOS and CMOS. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to go through the requirements from our CompTIA a 220-701 section 1.2, where we need to explain motherboard components, types, and features, specifically the BIOS, the CMOS, the firmware, and we're going to learn all about post and a CMOS battery. It's a lot of abbreviations in this one, isn't there? Let's step through this BIOS, which stands for Basic Input Output System. We're also going to learn about what CMOS is, which is a complementary metal oxide semiconductor. And we're going to talk about how we use all of those things, those crazy names that we have here. We'll first talk about what happens when we start a computer. We turn on a computer you know that the computer has to be able to do a lot of different things. It has to know when we push a key on a keyboard, what does that really mean? We're pushing a number. We know we're hitting the letter A. But how does our computer know that we're hitting the letter A? When we plug in a monitor, how does it know what to show on that monitor? So that type of translation between the real world components that are out here and the hardware of the computer has to be done by something. If only there was some basic system that would allow us to have all of these different communication between all of these different components happen. And the, re the way that we're able to make that happen is with this thing called the CMOS. This is a complementary metal oxide semiconductor. So the chip itself, the thing where we are storing the BIOS information, is all in this CMOS. We never really call it a complementary metal oxide semiconductor. You'll always hear it referred to as a CMOS, and it's just a type of memory that's available. It's backed up with a battery. So the, the battery that's on the motherboard, and if you look at your motherboard, there's a battery there. It always is there to make sure that whatever configuration that we have put into our computer, that it is stored there and always available and backed up. Now we also, uh, one of the things, if, if we lose the battery, we lose the configuration details. We lose the time, we lose the date, and we lose, of course, the configuration of our system. So we always want to make sure that if our computer is booting up and saying, I don't remember anything, we want to remember that it's probably best case to, to replace that battery. When we turn on our computer, we're just so accustomed to it, always remembering the way we configured the hardware. It's because that battery is on our motherboard. Now, this amount of configuration detail, this memory that's there, doesn't have to be very big. It's not like we're storing a lot of information. We're telling our computer there's this kind of hard drive. We're telling our computer there's this much memory inside of it. This is the date. This is the time. And the BIOS really is uh, there to allow us to configure that and store it for our CMOS configuration. So 128 bytes of content is really all we need. And on many computers, it's not even a separate set of memory. The whole process is really just integrated into the Southbridge chipset. And if you need to know more about Southbridge, just watch our previous video on chipsets. You'll learn all about the Southbridge. The BIOS itself stands for Basic Input Output System. This is the software that's put onto the CMOS. This is essentially what people call the firmware of their computer. This is what starts up when you turn your computer on for the first time. And different pieces, different BIOS settings, different BIOS configurations look and, and act differently. This happens to be a front end for a Phoenix BIOS setup utility. We'll look at one in just a moment that's very similar to this. But generally, the BIOS configurations all have the same type of information in there. This is designed to really conduct all of those different pieces. It knows now what type of keyboard you have, what type of monitor is plugged in. It knows where those monitor ports and the video ports are on your computer. It knows how many hard drives are in your computer. And it orchestrates the entire thing. Every computer in here, every computer that you have, every computer out in the world has to have this BIOS read-only memory because when you turn on your computer, it has to know what to do. If you were to remove the BIOS from your computer, it's a rock. It's a boat anchor. It can't do anything. So it's very important that if you're doing a BIOS upgrade that you make sure that upgrade works properly because if the BIOS upgrade doesn't work, then your computer doesn't work anymore. If you look on your motherboard, you'll find a battery there. This is the motherboard that I have in my office and the, the battery that I have on there, just a lithium, lithium ion battery that you can really buy anywhere. As I mentioned, when you boot your computer and you're getting error messages about the configuration that's missing, it's probably a bad battery. You'll see that every time you boot up or every time you disconnect from power and reconnect again, you'll get that message. You can often reset the BIOS and all the configurations within there by removing the battery. 
Now, obviously, you lose the configuration of the BIOS, but you'll also lose any passwords that are in there. If you got a new computer from somebody or a used computer and they password protected it with the BIOS, take that battery out for about 15 minutes, put it back in there, and you may find that your BIOS completely clean now and you can get into the system without needing any of those passwords. When you first boot your computer, you're going to see some options for configuring the BIOS. Usually this is a key that you would push as the system is booting, a delete key, an F2 key, sometimes it's Control S, sometimes it's Control and Alt and S. The exact keystrokes will depend on the manufacturer of the BIOS that's in the computer that you're using. You're really going to see a screen pop up a lot like this. It's going to start up and it says on it, press the delete key to run setup. That's what it's talking about. This is the AMI BIOS. And that means that you would have to hit the delete key very quickly before this power on self test process completes. We're talking about post earlier. This part where the computer, when it first boots up, checks memory, checks your hard drives, checks everything that's in your system. All the basic hardware components are there. That's called the post. And so you have to be able, before the power on self test is complete, to hit that delete key, or you're not going to be able to go into the BIOS. If you want to have access to the BIOS and make BIOS changes and experiment with different settings inside of the BIOS, you may not want to do it on your workstation because you can make changes to the BIOS that could potentially leave your computer in an unusable state. And unless you undo or you remember the way that it was previously, it becomes a little bit of a difficult situation. You don't want to create any problems for yourself. So one of the things that you could do is run a virtual PC or a virtual machine piece of software on your desktop that essentially emulates and looks just like another computer. You're essentially running a computer inside of a computer. And one thing, if you'd like to learn more about using virtual machines, we've created an entire video just on using virtual machines. It's not part of the CompTIA requirements, but I think if you use virtual machines in your studies, especially since you have to know Windows 2000, you have to know Windows XP, you have to know Windows Vista. Instead of installing all of those on separate machines or having dual boot or triple boot or quad boot configurations, why not just all run it in the same operating system and just run it on your desktop? as if you have a virtual machine inside of it. That's what these do. And so there's two that you could look at for this. One is Microsoft Virtual PC. This is the URL for that. Virtual PC is a free product from Microsoft. You can run it on Windows XP and higher. Virtual PC is something that is integrated into Windows 7. It's In fact, it's not Microsoft Virtual PC and Windows 7. It's a virtual PC that is built into the operating system. So that becomes a little more difficult to work with. If you're on Windows 7, you don't have direct access to BIOS configurations. At least it's not easy to do that. There are ways to get around that, but it's not very straightforward. There is uh, perhaps a good example uh, of something that we'll use today is virtual or VMware Player. It's a virtual machine from VMware. This is the URL for that. VMware Player is very useful. It is also a free product. It requires registration, but it provides a very easy front end to be able to get to the BIOS. Now, there is a virtual machine that I'm not listing here that you may have seen me use. In fact, we use it a lot in this course, which is VirtualBox that you can get from virtualbox.org. It's a product made by Sun. Now, VirtualBox is extremely useful. It can run many, many different kinds of operating systems, not just Windows operating systems. The problem, though, with VirtualBox is that it doesn't have access, direct access, to the BIOS configuration as if it was running on a single machine. So because we don't have that direct access to the BIOS, we don't have a way to show that and experiment with it. So unfortunately, VirtualBox is not a good option for doing this BIOS configuration setting. I'm going to focus on using VMware Player for this. So let's load up VMware Player, and we'll have a look at all of the BIOS configurations and see what we can see.